Brian Powell of I Run Far here with Michael Eich before the 2014 Western States 100. How are you, Michael? I'm doing well. Thanks for asking. How are you? I'm doing all right. Good. You have uh, given a serious go at 200 so far. You jumped into the Zion earlier this year. Yeah, uh, Zion was a it was a kind of a training run choice. It, it was odd, you know. My head wasn't in it. You know, I wasn't so serious about it, so, you know, when I got kind of, like, frustrated, it was easy just to say, you know, I got seven, eight hours under my belt, and, you know, I just walk away and still be able to walk and run the next day. So, um, it, it could have been looked at as a mistake, it could have been looked at as a great support in the long run and, and preparation for a start, but um, I just didn't go on with the mindset that, you know, like, I was competing, yeah. so it was easy just to, like, pull the plug. But you do have now two serious hunters before you in your past with the Leadville twice. Um, what have you learned in those and since that to, to come into this race? We don't have time for that. Um, <laughs> what haven't I learned? Uh, no, it's, it's, I don't know, I think it's about respect. Um, it, it's a long way. You're biking, you're running, you're driving. 100 miles is a long way. And, um, you know, it, it's it's been a big curve for me in nutrition-wise. Mm -hmm. um, I think fitness has been the easy part, but it's not about fitness. You know, a friend of mine always says that, um, you know, everybody's fit, mm -hmm. but it, it's who can eat and drink and fuel and get from the start to the finish. That, that, those are the guys that win. So, you know, it's just those little extra bits, um, being able to carry, you know, enough fuel, being able to take it. Um, you know, I ran into a lot of trouble in Tarawera this year because I didn't drink enough. Mm -hmm. You know, I just looked at the weather and feel like I needed it and you know I, I blew apart terribly so yeah you know, I've learned lots I've got lots more to learn um, I'm still enjoying it and you know I don't know if anybody knows everything no yeah. um at least your first time at Leadville and even a little bit your second you didn't have a full long dedicated training program as you have for this like you've really been looking at this for yeah you know what I think um Sick, like last year, Leadville, I, I was very focused on one race. Yeah. Where this year, you know, I thought, you know, I'll get into the, the whole racing thing. and um, So I'd actually say that I probably got in more um, quantity for Leadville mm -hmm. than this. But here I've got in um, a lot more quality. Okay. Um, you know, a lot of back to backs, and they, they weren't long, but, you know, they were tough. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I really focused. Um, I was talking to. Um, a few people that have run a few times and they were like, look, you know, I just focus on your downhills. You know, you gave me some, you know, great advice and, um, you know, I've really been focusing on that kind of stuff. So, you know, like, just going to take it, you know, step by step, see how far I get. Um, yeah. Have you worked more on either ascending or descending? Oh, yeah, loads. Um, I've always been, so I think, you know, really good at going up. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, you know, it was evident I was out of shape at, uh, at Sean O'Brien. You know, that just suited me. I could kind of fake it. But um, the coming down has is, is been really tough, and I've worked really, really hard on that. Um, a lot of really long, you know, slow uphill repeats and then coming down fast. So um, hopefully it pays off. It's downhill race. Yeah, I know. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, you sort of got a little reputation because you, you went out really fast at two lead bills. Granted, you were with the pack the second year, but you really have said that you, you try to run within yourself and try to run the best race you can on that day. What does that race look like on Saturday? If you have a great day, what are you shooting for? If I have a great day, um, I think everybody's realistic. My realistic great day is top 10. You know, obviously if, if I can get within 10 miles of the finish and I'm moving and uh, there's people close, you know, it's all on, you know, let loose, you know, I'm, I'm out. For blood, but um, you know, I, I think it's just a matter. I just want to get to that finish line. Mm -hmm. um, I think that you know, I <clears throat> I don't really have anything to prove. You know, no one really has given me any any props to like you know watch out for this guy. You know, I'm in a great position where I can just run and enjoy the race. Um, I was talking to Ian Sharman, and he said his first year he ran with a camera, and then he ended up getting top ten. So I'm like, maybe I'll do that. You know, um, he was just so relaxed about it that he said it went well. Um, you know, Nick Clark, we've been, um, we ran a little bit together and, and he gave me some great advice and, you know, he was just like, just, just get to the finish line and, and there's a good chance you'll be in the top 10. Now, how do you do that? Coming from, a, you know, having that track background where, you know, you are 
so focused for such a short period of time. You, it's, it's all in from the gun. How do you transition to, I'm just going to go jog for 50 been, or 60 or 70 it's miles? It's been hard. It's been really hard. Um, I think this race is cool because um, I can focus on aid station to aid station. Mm-hmm. And at Leadville, I did the same thing. Um, I, I think I've really, like, you know, practice the nutrition a lot, so you know, hopefully that works out. Um, but yeah, aid station to aid station, and uh, this time I'm ready for that bad patch where I never knew it existed uh, at Leadville. So you know, I'm ready for it to hit, and it might take two, three, four hours, and then you know, hopefully get through it, and then I know that I can run again after it. So that's an important lesson. It's it's hard. Like these young guys coming in, like no offense, but if you haven't done a hundred, you know, good luck because. <laughs> That, 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 that hole that you get into, that you do get into, <laughs> hurts. <laughs> and, uh, you know, at level I quit. I was dumb. And it was only after sitting down for an hour that my pacemaker was like, look, we're leaving, you know, let's go. And I was like, are you serious? So, yeah, like, you think you're dead, but you can come back. And you can keep coming back. <laughs> so, how are you going? Are we going to see you off, you know, with the front group, whoever it is? for as long as you can or are there people you might like try to hang back with who may have a little more experience i've got a select few that i want to kind of uh keep close to um i got a plan i got a plan yeah um and for everybody that thinks that i'm going to go off the front and give it hell um you know keep thinking that uh, <laughs> i uh i want to make it to the finish you know and like i said i got a, a little little bit of experience but um you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not fooled that I think that I can run up the top. But they, these are good runners. Yeah. I mean, there's like 50 of them, and uh, they've been doing this a lot longer than I have, and they're a lot smarter, and they've learned a lot more lessons. So, you know, all I can do is, is hope that I'm running when I cross the river, and, and then, you know, then the tables turn a little bit. Hopefully, mm-hmm. so we'll see. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, the, the way you position yourself mentally for where you're going to finish, like if you're aiming for the win, you here it's not going to be super hot. And there's so many talented runners, you have to be aggressive and just get lucky in a way. It has to just be your day. I, 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 look, at, I look at these guys that, uh, that win the race and you see that uh, they have a different perspective to the guys that go out and want to win the race. You know, um, and, you know, it, it, someone was telling me that once they cross the river, most people walk up to the first aid station and drop out. I was like, that sounds great. You know? <laughs> So I've just got to make it past them. I'm doing all right. But so what is that different perspective between the... I think it's a matter of, uh, you know, surviving the day and, you know, competing and trying to beat everyone on the day until you get to the part where it's time to start competing. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe they should uh, just run the 80 miles and line everyone up and then we just have like a flat out, like, you know, 10K race or something. Well, a couple they years could... ago, there was a mile on the track of the day after the, so they could, they the could Sunday sort of afternoon. <laughs> Um, you feel your chances a little better there? Maybe. I don't know. I just got to get to that finish first. Shit. It's tough. Uh, during the lead up to this year's race, you may have had a little bit more uh, opportunity in part to live the lifestyle, I guess, a little bit more. Have you? Yeah, it's, it's been challenging because uh, it got set up that way that I was like, yeah, you know, now I can be, you know, back to being a professional athlete and focus. And, 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 um, and then personally, um, me and my wife went through, you know, some different things in our life that it made it a lot harder. So there's been a lot of different outside stresses that have come into it that, um, you know, I kind of ate up that time that I thought I'd just be sitting on the couch eating chips. Um, so, you know, like, I'm not complaining because, uh, you know, I, I wasn't having to, to clock in and stuff, but there was other things that were on my mind for, you know, bits and pieces of the build up. But, you know, it's been weird. I've been camping and I've got nothing to do now and I'm kind of bored. Yeah, so <laughs> can't wait for this bloody thing to start. Bored enough that you were out skateboarding this week? Yeah, I went down to the park. Um, yeah, Chucky's got a really neat little skate park, actually. Um, went down and we had a roll around, and, you know. It was fun. It was a nice way just to blow off some steam. And, I, you know, people burn way too much energy and, and you know, nervous energy, so uh, it was nice just to relax and stuff. You're still mad to... You seem pretty relaxed. Yeah, no, it was good. I'm, uh, I'm hanging out, so it's been good. Nice. So, uh, yeah. best of luck out there. And, uh, yeah. Well, uh, you know, before we go, man, thanks so much for all the support. Um, you know, thanks for everything that I Run Fire and you yourself have done for the sport. Because 
it, it's the way it's growing it, it's neat to see coming from the outside and you know just what you're doing is, is fantastic and i don't know if anybody has ever said that well, thank you mike <laughs> <laughs> bonus question you were at the skate park this week what was the uh, the best trick you threw oh uh, i don't know uh, a small disaster on, uh, what's that look like it's just a lot of spinning and moving and like maybe a board slide I don't know there wasn't many tricks honestly I was just rolling around just it was stretching you know some people like yoga I like skateboarding what shoes do you uh, board in um that day I was boarding in the Mizuno Wave Kazans <laughs> <laughs> it's a trail slash skateboard hybrid it's good nice yeah. <laughs> for all you skateboarding ultra runners out there the Kazans <laughs> yeah